In this video, we're gonna cover how you can use the different all functions in DAX. We're gonna go through all of their differences as well as using real life examples so you know exactly when you should be using them. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where I focus on teaching beginners the wonderful world that is Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So let me show you the example that I prepared for you today. All right, so this is a simple Power BI desktop file that shows information about employees absence. So let me show you the data sets. We have a employees table which has information about employees and their absences. So we have um, each row is an employee and they have absence hours here and we have different information about them like their length of service and their age. We have a business unit which defines it, it, it has a relationship between the employees uh, to understand which region, region they belong to. And we also have a calculation table which houses a couple of our DAX measures at the moment. So I pre-created some of them already. Uh, we have one which calculates the absence hours, converts it into days, because at the moment it's just hours. We also have a DAX measure that counts the number of employees. So in this page here, we can see that we have 8,000 employees in our employees table. So it's just a normal count. And in here, I have a table that just brings in the business units and gender. So for each business unit and then the genders of each of those. If I bring in the measure, which counts the number of employees, you'll see that the measure, as we know, is filtered by context. So what that means is that every time you bring the measure in a different context, it recalculates based on that context. So what that means is this count measure that we have counts specifically for that context itself. So in here, for example, because we brought the count um, on the business unit in this table where we have business units and gender, it only counts the female and head office employees. And it does the same thing for the different contexts in these rows. So that's why if you just bring in the count by itself on a card, it will give you an overall number. And the filter context allows you to drill down deeper into those numbers. Let's delete this for now. Now the all function returns a table and it excludes any filter context applied to it. So what do I mean by that? Let me show you. So let's start by creating a new measure, right? So let's create a new measure. Let's put all data equals and you type all, you will see that it tells you that this table returns all the rows in a table or all the values in a column, ignoring any filters that might have been applied. So all table returns table. And as you know, from my previous video, we, this table, so sorry, this function is a tabular function. So that means we can, we need to convert it into a scalar. So we'll first need to use a function that requires a table in order for us to use the all function. So in this case, let's do, count rows so you'll see this one this function asks for a table so this is a perfect scenario where we could use the all function so let's do an all here and here let's just count the number of employees let's close it and hit enter so now if we drag this into our table here so you'll see that it it shows us 8,193. So it ignores all of the filter context that we have in this table itself. So it just gives us the total regardless of how many times we uh, slice and dice this data. It will always give us that all value. So now you're probably thinking to yourself, well, what's the point of this function, right? So let me give you an example, right? So let's say you want to show what is the percentage in total of the employees in this category um, against all of the data 
um, and the only way you do that is by dividing the number of employees to the total so you would want to do 4000 for example for this row you would do 4000 divided by 8000 um, which will give you about 50 percent but the only way you would be able to calculate that in this fil filter context is by using the old data as your denominator so let's update this calculation so let's create actually a new measure instead so i can show you let's make it a little bit bigger um, let's see percent of employees so we'll name it percent of employees equals now we'll do a divide which will safely divide our numbers that we have for the numerator we will need to do the count of employees and then for our denominator we want to do our count rows right so we want to do the count rows where we do all of employees and then we put a comma and we put an alternative result of zero so let's break down this function as it is. So what it does is it divides the number of employees, which is affected by filter context, against the number of employees in total. This is without the filter context. So what does this give us? We hit enter and let's drag this into our results. We'll need to convert this into a percentage and that will give you the percentage of the employees against the total number of employees you see it it goes to 100 uh, percent in total so that's one of the ways that you can use the all function right if you want to calculate against all without getting affected by filter context so let's look at another example right so let's pretend that you wanted to see the percentage of employees against um, for a specific division so let's pretend you wanted to see the executive now you'll see that the employees are 11 which is a lot less and now there's something weird here now right because we have the old data as 8193 what our calculation is doing is it's doing the calculation 5 divided by 8000 um, which gives us 0.06 this is now not useful to us because it calculates against all the employees um, uh, because we use the all function um, and it doesn't add up to 100% anymore we want this to add up to 100% what you can use is a function called all selected so what all selected does is it allows other filters external filters to be applied to that measure so let me show you what i mean by that so let's go to the old data and let's change this to an all selected so if we do an all selected it asks for a table or a column name um, in this case we will try to do the um, so we will do the employees as a table so now you will see that the old data that we have now is not 8000 anymore but it's affected by the filters that we selected externally so at the moment we have 11 in total for this division and it gives us 11 here now what now what we can do now to fix our percent of employees we can do we can go to our measure and now we can just replace this with an all selected simple as that hit enter so now you'll see it gives us the percentage of employees against the current division that we're looking at um, and now if we change the div different divisions you'll see that it will always add up to 100 percent and what's great is that if we go back to the overall it stays the same so you will have the same 
result that you had when you used the O, except that it accounts for any external filters that you might apply against this measure. Let's go on another example, right? So let's look at another table that we have here. So this is a table that we have business units. And this business unit is pretty simple, right? It gives us the business unit and region. We use it as a way to propagate our filters against the employees table. Um, and let's use it as an example because it's, it's pretty small. Uh, let's create a new measure here. Um, and what we want to do is we want to do a, um, let's do a count business unit is equals to, um, we will do count rows because we need a scalar function to feed into our table. And now we want to put, so we know that when we do all, we can put tables or columns here. At the moment we've been using tables, but you can also put column names here. Um, so if we do all, and let's put, let's say business unit in the business unit table. What does this do? Well, what it does is it counts the number of employees, or sorry, the count of business units in this column so it tells us we have five business units uh, in this uh, in this business unit column. So essentially, what it what this does is it gets the business unit and says count how many those are. And if we do the same with well, we will we will get the same value. But if we we can add more values to this, so it can be multiple columns. So if we want to do count the region as well. I think it should return the same because it just counts the number of rows on that table, right? What you can do, if for example, you wanted to um, define, or rather you have, if you have a lot of columns that you need to define, um, and you can define as many as you want here, but for example, you might have too many and you just want to exclude some of them in your count, what you can use is a function called all select all except so we'll see here it tells us that it returns all the rows in a table except for those rows that are affected by the specified column filters so it works exactly the opposite of the all um, so it, it does the all and then it counts however whatever you list here in this all except is it gets accepted into our account so let's say um, business unit uh, so here it actually, before we do that, we, it asks for, it asks for two different things, right? It asks for a table name and the column name. So we'll do business unit, which is the table name. And then we put the comma and then here we put the column that we want to exclude from our table. So, um, instead, for example, if we wanted to count just the business unit, you want to exclude the region that will only count the rows in the business unit column. So it will exclude region. So let's move on to the next example. Um, to explain to you again on the relationship, we have a one-to-many relationship between the business unit and the employees and they're linked through business unit, right? So this just allows us to propagate the filters to see employee and which region they belong to. If we go back to our report view and this is the business unit table add by itself. So you'll see from here we can reuse the calculation that we already created the count of employees to count the number of employees per business unit, right? Um, let's create a new measure, count of employees two, and let's count the number of regions that we have here. And to do that, we will do the same thing. So count rows, we'll do all, and then we will type here region and let's drag this into the table. So you'll see that when we drag that in, it shows the business units that don't have employees and it gives us five, um, which is actually what we don't want because we only just wanted the, the regions that do have some data so the uk and the usa but it gives us everything regardless right but because that's what we have on our parent table we have five tables in total 
how do we avoid this problem? Now, you can avoid this problem by using this DAX called all no blank rows filter. So let's try to do that. So let's try to replace this with the this new DAX function. So all no blank row returns all the rows except blank row in a table or all values in a column. Um, the description is a little bit um, weird um, and it looks like what it's supposed to do is it excludes empty values in a column but that's not what it does it it excludes values in um, in the parent table that isn't matching with the child table so um, yeah don't get confused so if we bring that in and you can specify the table or a column in this case we will do the employees um, in our employees table Sorry, business unit in our employees table. So we need to specify the child, um, the child column here. And when we hit enter, this would only show two. So which is the UK and the USA. So exactly what we needed. And that's it for this video. I hope this helps you understand how you can use the different all functions in DAX. If you have any more comments or questions, let me know in the comment section box below. Get in touch using the social media links that I included in the description box below. And thank you so much guys for watching. See you again on the next one.